The Shadow Foreign Minister Penny Wong warns the Morrison government is deliberately encouraging anxiety about a potential war with China. As tensions between the two countries continue, Senator Wong says the top priority for the government should be the safety of its citizens. She also took aim at Defence Minister Peter Dutton and Home Affairs boss Michael Pizzullo, accusing the pair of giving Beijing too much leverage. Senator Wong made those comments on the day she launched a new book on China by author Peter Harcher titled The Red Zone, a deep dive into the growing threat of Xi Jinping's China. To discuss the book, I was joined earlier by Peter Harcher and I asked him what he meant when he spoke about greater competence needed by the Australian government. Well, the standout example would have to be, if you're talking about national security, would have to be the submarine program. The uh, Chinese military delivers one new submarine every year and a half on average. The, the Chinese government now has more submarines than the US. That's new. Uh, and yet, in our case, we've got the six Collins class need replacing. But we're going to, looking a decade ahead, we're still not sure we're going to have any of the new submarines. So this is a clear example of incompetence. Labor wasn't much better beforehand, with plans made, torn up, funding cut. The Liberals have been no better. This is a glaring example of failure of competence in our country. Does it also extend to a greater competence when it comes to statecraft and diplomacy, when it comes to managing the China relationship? Uh, well, we, we've sort of fumbled and bumbled our way to where we are, uh, kind of quasi-accidentally, quasi-deliberately. But that's not a bad thing, because where we were before was essentially tolerating the Chinese Communist Party's uh, long-running intr intrusions into our sovereignty. So we sort of got to where we are, eventually standing up to uh, the Chinese government, thanks to a decision, active decisions of the Turnbull government over Huawei and foreign interference laws, with bipartisan support for, from Labor on all those big substantive decisions. So that was good, and we were lucky that a government stood up and lucky that an opposition uh, formed a united front on that. But from here, we don't really seem to have a cogent strategy to get to the next phase. Uh, a cogent strategy would be really good, uh, and one that doesn't just look at defence in the traditional terms, uh, of national security, where it's military hardware, because the genius, and we, you have to give them credit, the genius of the Chinese Communist Party is that if you can penetrate a country's political system and its democratic institutions, you weaken it from the inside, it doesn't matter how tough the military hardware is on the outside, if the political will is not there and they can get their way without having to, without having to push and shove. How do you judge other countries like Japan and Singapore? Penny Wong, in launching your book today, spoke about the, the Japanese example and their management of the China relationship. They're obviously in much closer proximity, but they've got similar challenges when it comes to different systems, but they have not compromised their values or their relationships with the United States. Mm. And they've still got a pro productive relationship with China. Yeah. Uh, you're right, and Penny's right, to make the point that the Japanese do all this while broadly shutting up about it um, and getting on with it. So the Japanese faced economic coercion trade sanctions from the Chinese a decade ago over their rare earths access and just cut off the supply of rare earths, critical minerals, which supplies everything from, you know, missile positioning systems to your mobile phone. Um, the Japanese didn't make too much of a stink, but they've now changed their, restructured their uh, system mm. to get, including, including helping to fund Australian producers of rare earths to make sure that their supply can't be cut off by China anymore. We need to make similar adjustments, uh, and the Chinese government, helpfully, unhelpfully, is forcing Australia to get off the narcotic of uh, trade dependency on a, ch on a China whose intentions towards us are essentially hostile. Uh, so um, that's all good. But the other difference is, I'd point out, the, the, the real difference is this, um, and why Japan is a lot more cautious, especially with its rhetoric. The Chinese military is making near daily incursions into Japanese airspace over the Senkaku Islands, which the Chinese claim as the Daiyu Islands. Mm. Uh, and any day, any resistance or any clash or accident could turn into a full-blown war. They are this close on any given day to a hot war with China. We don't have that problem. Uh, we have more room for slippage. 
but let's hope that we've got through the rehearsal phase and we can now get to the serious phase. When it comes to the issues like foreign interference, like the 5G network, as, as you rightly point out, uh, mm. that this is a bipartisan position, uh, and, and, and basically all of the issues of substance when it comes to Chinese economic coercion, foreign interference attempts and so on. The fundamental point, though, that Penny Wong made, uh, the difference is that essentially we shouldn't poke them in the eye. Mm. Uh, isn't that just diplomacy? It's sort of a common sense uh, thing, right? It's what you'd expect. I haven't been as critical of the government, and for this reason, that... Uh, a lot of Australians don't realise the ambition uh, and the activism going on in China, the fact that the president of China, Xi Jinping, week to week will visit China's military bases, dresses in camouflage like, a, you know, like he's part of the military, stands out the front, and he has a standard refrain, prepare to fight and win wars. That's what he says in public to his own troops. And he's been doing it for years. Do, do we know that? No, we don't. So... To have some of our officials and, and politicians occasionally just point out to us the potential stakes, I don't think it's too terrible. A little bit of consciousness raising is not a bad thing. And now, Penny Wong is right, though, to say you come to a certain threshold and it just becomes recklessness and becomes a provocation to the Chinese government uh, if you keep going. And I guess the test of this will be as the election campaign approaches here next year, mm. probably next year, uh, if the Morrison government keeps cranking up the rhetoric, then we know they're just playing politics. And, and, is, and also, isn't it the risk here, Peter, that you've got a situation, if the rhetoric's cranked up, it, it almost inflates the problem? Because yes. if you look at their efforts on political interference, for example, our democratic institutions have been holding up well. Their biggest scalp is... I'm not saying it's insignificant, but Sam Dastyari. What was significant is he was forced out of the parliament. That's an achievement for Australia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in terms of in terms of their Nothing political personal, interference Sam. attempts, yes, they're not having a great deal of success. They might it might be their goal, but to this point, it's ham-fisted, isn't it? Well, that's right. And the Australian government woke up, and there are now operations running across Australia where ASIO and the federal police are monitoring and working against other similar cases. That's underway silently right now. But yes, if you talk up the threat of war and talk about a war with China, then you are empowering the Chinese leader to talk about a war with Australia. And you are giving him evidence that Australia is, is warmongering, which only strengthens his arm in appealing to nationalism at home and talking, beating the drums of war himself. So, yes, there's got to be a limit to this, and maybe, maybe this is about the right place to live. Yes, and final uh, proposition I'll put to you is if, if the US and China do start working together, for example, on climate change. Mm. It's not out of the realm of possibility. Certainly for the world, we hope so, for mm. uh, the, the climate and, and potentially other shared interests. Yeah. Is there a, a chance that Australia is left out in the cold? Uh, I think there is a big chance Australia gets left out in the cold, not necessarily on the climate question. I think uh, there are areas where Australia and China can collaborate, uh, including with the US there including uh, transnational crime, climate change, trade. Uh, that should all be in the green zone for cooperating. Where we risk uh, being left in the cold by ourselves or on the, on the field alone, as Kurt Campbell uh, put it, is if the next US president is, doesn't care about allies, if the next US president uh, is as reckless and negligent of allies' interests as Donald Trump was, We've got, a, we've got a lucky break for four years, but the fa and the fact is that Joe Biden is a much more supportive ally who approaches China as the leader of an alliance. Donald Trump approached China as one country, trying to get the best deal for that country, and left the rest of us potentially out in the cold. So it's a, a warning. That's, that's a big danger. And because of that and other risks, we have to prepare, be prepared to go it alone if we must. Peter Harcher, as I said, uh, congrats on the book Red Zone. Appreciate your time today. Thanks. Thank you, Kieran.